Fellow viewers, good evening. As your president, I assure you that every challenge we will deal with, and this is not a government that will shy away from any challenge. As you know, uh, we have been experiencing uh, power outages, uh, prolonged power outages, that we are totally dissatisfied with. However, it is very important that we understand the prevailing circumstances and conditions through which the Guyana Power, Guyana Power and Light is operating. You know, we have a situation in the country where we are trying to catch up for years of neglect, five years of not investing in the maintenance of the system, expanding the system, and at the same time, building additional capacity to take care of the increasing demand. As I said before, the growth and development of our country is not only impacting the supply of labor and material. In power too, there is greater demand for power, greater demand for energy. And we, are, we, we find ourselves in a position where we have to make up for all those years of neglect where no investment was made in the system, and at the same time, build additional capacity to, uh, to fulfill the requirements of the existing system and beyond. The truth be told, the pace at which we are growing would require us to double our capacity as quickly as possible. Our generating capacity needs to be more than double uh, if we are to keep pace with the type of development and projections that we are seeing. That is why the gas to shore, the gas to energy project and the hydroelectric project uh, is, is so important for us in the national scheme of things. Uh, so I want to give some context to this issue and for the population to understand what we are doing. The problem here is that it is like swimming against the tide and with the tide at the same time because we have to make up for lost time at the same time build uh, for, for uh, ahead of time. So it is swimming against the tide and with the tide at the same time. Take for example when we came into office. The, the company was in, a total, was in total collapse financially. In government arrears alone, they, they had $13 billion outstanding to GPL. $13 billion outstanding to GPL. This was money we had to find to save the company from financial collapse. Outside of this, the capital program, the maintenance program, the investment program was really non-existent. So we had to start from that. Now, if as a country we had achieved the Amila Falls Hydro project in 2013, that would have seen 165 megawatts of power in the system. This would have been at maybe US 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Today we are paying about 22 cents per kilowatt hour. And if we did not subsidize uh, the, the company by over 100 million US dollars, remove all the taxes on fuel, and inject money into the capital program, that might have been close to 40 cents. We have been able to subsidize that, bear that cost, and keep it at about 22 cents. But had we have that hydroelectric project completed, you will see power at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, the other thing that we must understand is that uh, during the five years of the APNU AFC government, no new capacity was installed, except there was no new capacity installed, except uh, in 2018, when the Hyundai, uh, uh, the, the Hyundai generator was installed with 5.5 megawatts of power. However, in 2018, the same year it was installed, it developed a crack shaft, a crack shaft failure, and did not work. So the one generating capacity of 5.5 megawatt, that is the Hyundai system, that they installed in 2018, immediately developed a crack shaft, and it failed to work. So we had no capacity. Outside of that, during the no-confidence period in early 2020, what we saw uh, was an investment of US 50 million by the last government for a 46.5 megawatt uh, uh, generating capacity for Garden of Eden. So out in the, uh, the no-confidence period, 
They spent 50 million U.S. dollars for 46.5 megawatts for uh, Garden of Eden. This 50, uh, this almost 46.5 megawatt was not commissioned until October 2021 when we came into government. And what we found, what we found is that these three engines that were procured presented problems with overheating initially and excessive lube oil consumption. So that that is a circumstance that we are operating. That was what we inherited. Those were the conditions uh, under which we inherited the, uh, the Guyana Power and Light operations. Now, in August 2020, GPL had reliable generating capacity of 120 megawatts. This is when we came into office. And we're not shying away from the problem. We have to confront this problem. But I want the population to understand the magnitude of the problem that we're confronting. And we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. In August 2020, we had reliable generating capacity of 120 megawatts. Demand at that time was 115 megawatts. <clears throat> so we you had very little room for fluctuation. In 2020, the government, when we came into office, we immediately ordered an additional 10 megawatt of small units. <clears throat> this is a small caterpillar units to be placed across the system. Whilst we did this, we had to undergo a massive investment on the maintenance of the TND system, which was completely neglected. The grid maintenance system was completely neglected for five years. So you had power outage, you had breakage, you had transformers uh, blowing. Uh, so we had to simultaneously invest in this. So over the last three years, we have restored two engines to full operation at Garden of Eden. We have embarked, as you know, on the 300 megawatt gas to energy project. We have also embarked on the transmission line of 200 and, uh, of 24 uh, kilowatt from Wales to Eccles. Sorry, 24 kilometers from Wales to Eccles. That is to support the 300 megawatt gas to energy project. We are doing the 24 kilometers. Uh, transmission line <coughs> from Wales to Eccles and also we are looking at the transmission line uh, of 60 kilometers from Wales to Breedahoo. So there is two, two transmission lines that will have to feed this power from the gas to energy project into the system. One is 24 kilometers from Wales to Eccles <coughs> that is across the Demra River and the second one is from uh, Freedom Hope to Wales, which is 60 kilometers. So 84 kilometers of transmission line uh, we have to uh, invest in to take off the power from the gas to energy uh, project to go into the grid and go into the system. So all of that we're doing now. In addition to this, within the coming weeks, we'll go back out an expression of interest for the Amylas Falls Hydro Project that is 165 megawatt hydro project that we're going to go out back to tender on. In addition to all of this, we're looking at uh, the, the tenders would have closed recently to have a grid tie system for energy generated from solar that is 33 megawatt to a secure Barbies and Linden. All of these investments we are making understanding, understanding the circumstances and the challenges we are faced with. Outside of all of this, you'll recall that we have removed the duty on fuel <coughs> to zero since COVID. We have also removed the VAT that was placed on electricity uh, by the last government. So when you take the subsidy we have removed from fuel and the level of subsidy we are placing in, that, in that electricity, take into consideration that the price of fuel when we came into government in 2020, Move from 41 US dollars per barrel to 91 US dollars per barrel today, fluctuated between that. It meant that as a government, we have been subsidizing the generation of electricity by 100 million US dollars during this period. As a result of subsidizing this electricity by over 100 million US dollars, what we found was that a number of the large customers 
who were self-generating, who invested in self-generation, <clears throat> came back to the grid. Because coming back to the grid with a level of subsidy would have saved them at least nine US dollars per kilowatt. Now we have no problem with that, with this. Because at the end of the day, as we increase our capacity and we want to bring down the cost of energy by half, we want as much person to enjoy this benefit on the grid. However, what has occurred because of the fast pace of growth is that the move by private consumers has driven up peak demand now to 185 megawatts, from 110 megawatts in 2020 to 185 megawatts. That is what peak demand is at now. And the peak demand occurs between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. every day and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the night. So this is the current circumstance that we are, we are faced with at GPL, where because of the level of subsidy that we have given, more consumers, especially large consumers, are back on the system who are self-generating, moving the demand up to 185 megawatts, and that demand is between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you will notice that that is the time frame generally that we have most of the blackouts. So <clears throat> right now, we are producing about 10 megawatt below what the peak requirement uh, necessitates. And we believe that more and more persons will come, so we have to plan ahead. So we've invested uh, in having another close to 30 uh, megawatt of additional power to come into the system. We are hoping to have this additional power to come into the system <clears throat> by mid-December. That would take care of the rising demand at peak and ensure that we don't have the challenges of the outages we have now. However, in the intervening period, we need to do something. And we have to, as a government, you have to make decisions. We wanted to create an incentive for persons to go back to self-generation. But when you look at what we've already done, we have removed the VAT on electricity, on electricity and we have also uh, removed the, the cost on fuel, all the taxes on fuel. There is absolutely no room for any adjustment there. So we want to encourage the high volume consumers to go back on self-generation between 1 to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. so that we will not have the outages to residential uh, uh, communities and residents across the country. When we look at it, maybe uh, if we have maybe around 15, 15 to 20 of the large consumers self-generating during this period, that would give us back that room uh, that will avoid the outages that we have now. So, in order to come up with a temporary solution, first we're encouraging uh, the, the high consumers to go off uh, um, during this period, but if they stay on the grid during this period, that is 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., as a temporary measure, we'll have an additional cost of 10 cents per kilowatt. An additional cost of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So they can go back without absorbing this additional cost by self-generating because they've built up the capacity for that between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is a temporary measure until we get this close to 30 megawatts of new power coming in at mid-December and that will take care and then this temporary measure will be uh, withdrawn so that everyone can come back on the grid. Because as you know, they will still benefit from the subsidy, the subsidized rate that the government is giving off peak. Our operations can be redesigned to uh, redistribute the, their individual peak demand so that between these periods, the peak on the grid does not outstrip the supply on the grid. That is between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So it's a uh, self regulating measure, basically. It's a self-regulating measure. Whilst we're doing this, we're investing heavily uh, in getting the uh, gas-to-energy project completed 
and that gas to energy project would allow us uh, to build that additional capacity and we are also moving swiftly ahead with a Miles Falls project that would give us the capacity to deal with the growth and the projected growth which I think would, would in the immediate term double in terms of demand as more and more persons come on the grid. And as we get to the point where we'll cut the cost of energy by half, this will be the scenario where more and more persons will come on the grid. So I just wanted to update, to first take ownership of the issue, because we're not going to hide from any issue. This is a challenge, and as a, as a government, we are confronting this challenge. But you, the people of Guyana, my dear Guyanese brothers and sisters, must understand what we inherited, the circumstances, the measure we are taking. This is a temporary measure, and how we are dealing with this problem to ensure that it's fixed in the immediate, medium, and long term. So I just wanted to spend some time updating you on this. Thank you very much for your time, and God bless you.